Hello and welcome to the third video in the Hobby King Parimotor series. Now the Parimotor is a cool new model from Hobby King and lots of people have done their videos on it already but this little series of videos that I've put together is more to help new pilots get it in the air because the manual doesn't have an awful lot of the detail that you need to get started and the last one we did the radio setup so you can download the uh, bits for your Tyrannus radio if that's what you're using. And in this one, I was hoping to get a maiden done, but the weather is horrific. So in the UK, I've been waiting now for about a week to do this video. So I'm just going to make it because I've got lots of people coming on to me saying, please do the third one. I've, mine's coming tomorrow. So for all of you that have asked for this, this is how you attach the canopy and how you do things like turning on the brake rather than turn it off uh, to make sure that when you stop the uh, throttle, the prop stops immediately so it doesn't tangle in the lines from the sail as everything's collapsing after you've landed. So, first of all, before we get into that, let me talk a little bit about some of the anatomy, I guess you'd call it, of a paramotor sail. Now, a lot of people are talking in their videos about the different risers and A-risers to the front and all that stuff, but let me explain what that means before we go on and attach the canopy, and then hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense to you. Uh, once I did this research and uh, kind of figured all this stuff out, then it made a lot more sense to me. So let's just jump onto the computer. Let me give you a very quick whistle-stop tour of the anatomy of the canopy or sail, if you want to call it, and the lines so that you understand how it all works so you know that when we go onto the bench it makes sense. So here we are looking at a picture of the paramotor in flight and you'll notice that there's loads and loads of different lines here and uh, where these things go from a single to multiple lines these are called cascades and we're going to need to set all this up. Now there are a couple of elements that we need to think about. Uh, these at the front, if I just zoom in here, you'll see at the front of where everything connects. There's actually two rings at the front. Uh, this is riser A and this is riser B. So the way it works on a full size canopy, you would probably have all of these front connections would go to riser A, all of these second line connections would go to riser B, all of these third line connections would go to riser C, and the brake is connecting to the back of the canopy. So in this one, this little model, we only have two risers. We have riser A that only has three lines coming off it. And then we have the other riser that actually has the connections for pretty much everything else. The only other thing that we have, and that's what's connected down to these kind of, uh, makes me feel like these are robotic arms, but these are the brakes. And the brakes are going to go through the little hoops at the back here and then go all the way up and then they are going to connect to the very back part of the wing. And the way it works is that when you're flying around, uh, the weight of the model is actually held on these two rings here, and the two brakes, when you pull them, are actually pulling down the back part of the wing. And what's happening there is it's creating additional drag. So if you pull the right side down, the right the back part of the right side of the wing is being pulled down as well. That's creating a lot more drag. So consequently, that slows down. The other one speeds up and you turn and vice versa. Similarly, when you pull both of the brakes at the same time, and that creates an awful lot more drag, and that slows the craft down. Now, in a full-size paramotor, there's lots of additional controls and trim tabs and uh, speed bars and all that kind of stuff. But for a little model like this, hopefully that helps you understand the basics. So the two risers, we have riser array that only has a three lines going on it to the first cascade. And the cascade is just where one line turns into multiple lines. And then we have the brake that's going to have to go through the little ring at the back of those two risers. And that is what's going to go and connect to the back of the canopy. So with that said, let's go onto the bench. So to do this next part, we're going to need a couple of things. Uh, the model's already set up, and the reason that we've done it is so that we don't have to worry about the canopy and the lines at this point, or the sail. So we're going to need a Sharpie pen and a ruler that can measure up to about 25 and a half inches, or about 649 millimeters. So I've waited until this point to take the canopy out because I don't want to mess the lines up or actually gently kind of twist things around. 
So carefully open up the canopy. It'll be beautifully folded. Make a note of how it's folded because that's going to be a nice way to fold it up again when you need to put it in the bag to take it out. You'll find that there's a little plastic thing around each of the risers. Again, be very careful when you're picking this up so you're not twisting anything, but remove that little bit of plastic and you should be able to separate the risers. Just be careful that you're not twisting anything around. Now, let me just zoom in on the riser and kind of show you a little bit um, of more detail on here. So hopefully in this closer image, uh, and this was something that I was struggling with in some of the other videos that I've watched with, the, the one that's only got the three lines on is the A riser that's going to point to the front. Uh, the one with all the other connections on is the B riser that's going to need to go at the back. And then you have the brake that goes through the other D ring that's actually at the back of the B riser. Uh, and so that's the brake. So what that means is that the bit that only has the three lines coming off it is the A riser. And that's the stuff that has to point to the front. So I would make a little mark on those just so that when you're putting everything together, it's an easy visual reference to know that you've got the right riser pointing forwards. But by making the mark, that's going to make it easier for the next part. So what I would do next is grab hold of your canopy, lay it out onto the floor, hold it by the two risers and just let it open. Now, you're going to need a bit of space here. Once you've got it all dangled, just make sure that none of the lines are tangled, nothing's twisted. Collect all the lines, as I've done here, and take it back to the bench. Now, the next thing we need to do is to measure the brake line length before we actually start attaching things to the cart. Once you've got it like this, then we are pretty close. So undo the brake line. Again, just be careful that you're not twisting things around. Um, and the brake line, what you want to do is from the first cascade or the knot on the first cascade, which is this bit over here, you want to measure 649 millimeters or just over 25 and a half inches. Now, don't stretch the cable. These are um, slightly elastic lines, so don't pull it. Just lay it out nice and straight, and at the 649 millimeter mark, just make a nice, clear, indelible mark with a Sharpie pen or something similar. Once you've done that, just double check that it's in the right place. I had to have a couple of goals of mine just because I thought I'd got it completely straight. Um, you want both sides exactly the same, and you want them both spot on at 649 millimeters. Once you've done that, pop it back through the ring on the rear of the riser and just put another little slip knot in there just to keep it safe and to stop it getting tangled in the other lines. Do that for both sides and then we're ready for the next step. So with the canopy behind, uh, pick up the riser that we've got ready and prepped and pop the D-ring through it. I'd recommend doing it so that the uh, the thread is on the inside. The only reason for that is it's easier then to get and tighten up the connector and you want to slip it through, pop it over the hole, put it at the front hole because that will help with the balance and then do the screw up that goes through and keeps it in place. Um, I wouldn't rely on hand tight here. I'd put something through it and just give it a nice firm nip, make sure it's all nice free moving. Again, on the other side, with the A riser to the front, we know which one that one is because we put the little mark on, do the same thing, and then both of the risers are attached. So let me just lie it on its back. So uh, next thing we need to do then is the brake lines. So now we're gonna undo that slip knot. We're gonna pull the brake line through a little bit more and we're gonna pop it through the top of the control arm. Now uh, the end of these seems to have been heat treated so it's not fraying, it's really good. And what you want to do is you want to put a knot in position so that the black line that we measured at that 640 odd millimeters or the 25 and a half inch mark is lined up with the top of the two D rings at the top of the risers. So hopefully this picture explains a little bit more clearly what that looks like. Now that is probably going to take a little bit of trial and error. You want it so that when the risers are pulled out slightly because that's how they'll be in flight. Both of them are in that position and they're both in the same position. 
it took me quite a bit of time just tying one knot after another and just testing it until it was absolutely spot on so the next thing we need to do then is to turn on the brake now this is normally something that you don't bother about with planes but we're going to need this for the paramotor we don't want the prop freewheeling as we come down and potentially lines get stuck in so just to prove it all works again prop off for this you don't want the prop on because that could be disastrous we can see that as I run the motor and turn it off, it continues to freewheel. That is not what we want. And you know it's going to freewheel because you get the double beep at the end to tell you that it breaks off. So to program it, we're going to put the throttle to the maximum position. We're going to plug it in. We're going to wait for the beeps. And after four sets of beeps, we're going to drop the throttle. It'll confirm the tone and now the motor will stop as soon as I lower the throttle which is perfect so we are in really good shape you could calibrate the throttle for the last piece so now we're all ready we just need to wait for a bit of sunshine to go out uh, from the feedback I've had from other pilots the over the head launch method about 50% throttle works really well so join me in the next video where we'll get this thing in the air and talk about some of the tips and tricks in trimming it and getting it to fly. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.